If we take the Mun cell color circle and lay it flat on a table and add a core with a gray gradation on it, we will begin to understand value as it relates to chroma. Each of the colors on the ring of the color circle is at its highest chroma. The color is just the way it looks squeezed out of the tube. Now let's match each color to the value of a gray in the core. We'll start at the bottom of the color circle with purple. Purple is very dark and it matches that very dark gray at the bottom of our cylinder. After purple comes blue purple. Notice how both colors are so dark it's hard to tell the actual color. Next, let's look at ultramarine blue. This is a very dark blue, almost as dark as the purple. It too will stay very low on our cylinder. After that, we have cerulean blue. Cerulean is a little lighter blue than ultramarine is, and if we were to take a black and white photo of that, we would see that it matches this slightly lighter shade of gray. Viridian, the next color, is back to being pretty dark, so viridian actually falls below cerulean in our graphic. That brings us to yellow-green. This is a light yellow-green, and you can see that that color moving up the side of the cylinder to the middle gray. Now we're looking at cadmium yellow light. This is our lightest yellow, and it moves all the way up to the top of our cylinder. Cadmium yellow medium is not as light as cadmium yellow light. It's more toward the middle gray. Cadmium orange is also close to the medium gray. Cadmium red light is a little darker than cadmium orange, even though it looks so bright. It looks bright because cadmium red light has a high chroma, but because it's a red, it has a low value. Cadmium red deep is almost as dark as viridian. Again, reds have a low value. And alizarin crimson is just a little lighter than the purple where we started. 